Welcome to the wild world of resonance. Resonance is a bizarre concept in which the true structure and properties of a molecule come from a combination of valid Lewis structures. Resonance reminds us that electrons behave as waves even when they're inside molecules. Thus, electrons can spread out their density over multiple bonds and lone pairs. What do I mean by this? Well, let's explore by drawing another Lewis structure. This time for disulfur monoxide. We'll follow the same rules as we did in the last lesson, which means first placing the least electronegative atom, sulfur, in the middle, then counting up the valence electrons. Each of these elements is in group 6A, so our total valence electron count is 18. Next, we'll draw bonds to connect the exterior atoms to the central atom, which uses four total electrons. Distributing the remaining electrons does not give each atom a full octet, and so we have to turn one of the lone pairs into a double bond. And here's where things get tough. Which of these two bonds becomes a double bond? Is it the sulfur-sulfur bond? Or is it the sulfur-oxygen bond? In other words, which of these two representations best reflects the real properties of the real S2O molecule? Does the molecule behave as though it has a long and weak sulfur-sulfur bond and a short and strong sulfur-oxygen bond? Or does the molecule behave as though it has a short and strong sulfur-sulfur bond and a long and weak sulfur-oxygen bond? Lucky for us, this mystery can be solved in the laboratory. And when we measure the strengths of each of these bonds, we find that they are each medium strong, of medium length as well. Neither bond is short and strong. Neither bond is long and weak. They are somewhere in between. What this means is that neither of the two Lewis structures at the top is a good representation of the actual S2O molecule. In fact, the real structure of S2O is a combination of its valid Lewis structures. We call this combination a resonance hybrid. In order to determine the resonance hybrid for a molecule, you have to draw all valid Lewis structures for that molecule. Each individual structure will be called a resonance contributor, and the real molecule will behave like a resonance hybrid of its resonance contributors. Resonance is a confusing concept for learners. In fact, it's a confusing concept for professors, too. Uh, here are two common mistakes people make when trying to understand resonance. First, resonance does not mean that a sample of S2O is a mixture of both resonance structures. If this were true, we would be able to separate the mixture out based on physical properties, but we cannot do this. Learners also sometimes imagine that resonance means the molecule is rapidly switching its double bond back and forth between sulfur and oxygen. This is not correct either. A sample of S2O contains no single bonds or double bonds. It contains only bonds in between single and double. In reality, we cannot represent the S2O molecule with a Lewis structure. It's just impossible. Instead, the molecule has a combination of the properties of each of the Lewis structures of the resonance contributors. While neither of these structures fully explains S2O's bonding, we can imagine the real structure is a combination of these two. We use a double-headed arrow to indicate resonance. Even though we use an arrow, the molecule is not switching back and forth between these structures. Instead, its true structure is somewhere in between these representations. Because resonance is difficult and confusing, I'll provide three analogies, and hopefully one of them will stick. I'll first compare resonance to colors, then I'll compare it to a rhinoceros, and finally, Beyonce. 
In our first analogy, we should think of each resonance contributor like a primary color of paint. For example, when we mix blue and yellow paint, we get green paint. Green is not blue. Green is not yellow. I can describe the properties of green as somewhat intermediate between the properties of blue and yellow. Similarly, let's look at the ozone molecule to the right. It's a combination of the two resonance structures written above. The real properties of ozone are somewhere in between the properties of each resonance structure. In analogy two, we can think of the resonance hybrid like a rhinoceros. A rhinoceros has some properties of a unicorn, like a single horn on the center of its head. A rhinoceros also has some properties of a dragon, like thick armor and the ability to fly and breathe fire. But a rhinoceros is not a unicorn, nor is a rhinoceros a dragon, nor is it rapidly switching back and forth between a unicorn and a dragon. What I like best about this analogy is that unicorns and dragons don't exist in real life. However, we could draw them on a paper, but a rhinoceros does exist in real life. This relates to resonance because each resonance contributor does not exist as a real molecule, even if we can draw a Lewis structure on the paper. Instead, the real molecule exists as the resonance hybrid between the resonance structures. In analogy three, Imagine I'm trying to describe to you about my cool friend, Tegan, whom you've never met. To describe Tegan, I say, oh, Tegan, she's like a mix of the singer Beyonce Knowles and the athlete Megan Rapino. She's got this really great voice and works in entertainment, but she and her wife are also excellent athletes. Now, you know that my friend Tegan is not Beyonce although I wish, you also know that Tegan is not famous soccer player Megan Rapino. And you also know that Tegan is not rapidly switching back and forth between being Beyonce one moment and being Megan the next. Instead, Tegan has some properties of Beyonce and some properties of Megan. She's a combination of these two superstars. We'll continue this analogy for the next question we'll ask about resonance and about Tegan. Is Tegan more like Megan or more like Beyonce? To shift back to chemistry, is the S2O molecule more like resonance contributor A or resonance contributor B? That's right, even though the resonance hybrid is a mixture of each of its resonance contributors, it does not have to be an equal mixture. To determine which resonance structure the real molecule represents, we need to calculate formal charges for each atom, as I've already done on the top two resonance structures. The dominant resonance structure minimizes the overall number of formal charges and puts any negative charges on the electronegative atoms. This is the same process we use to decide the best Lewis structure. For our S2O molecule, oxygen is the most electronegative atom and oxygen prefers to have that negative charge. So the right resonance contributor is dominant and the properties of the S2O molecule are closer to the right resonance contributor than to the left. So in real life, S2O has a slight negative charge on its oxygen atom and a slight positive charge on its central sulfur atom. This probably felt like a lot. And if you don't understand it this first time, I don't blame you. Resonance is very difficult. If we keep practicing, I promise it will make more sense. See how far you can get with this practice problem. First, try to draw both valid resonance structures for the nitrite ion. Then combine those two structures into a resonance hybrid. Next, Considering that the real molecule is an average of its resonance structures, 
try to calculate the bond order of the NO bond and the formal charge on each oxygen atom. To draw two valid Lewis structures for nitrite, we need to go through the steps we practiced in lesson 8.5. I won't go through them in depth, but I will note that you need to keep the charge in mind when counting valence electrons for this species and many other species included. I determined these are the two valid resonance contributors for nitrite. One has a double bond to the left oxygen and the uh, other has a double bond to the right oxygen. Notice the formal charges are on different oxygen atoms for these two resonance structures. Both of these structures contribute equally to the resonance hybrid, which I've drawn using dashed lines to indicate intermediate bonds. Next, to calculate the bond order, we take the average of the bond orders of each resonance structure. For the first bond, resonance structure A has a double bond and structure B has a single bond. The average between a double bond and a single bond is a one and a half bond. That is correct. Bond orders can be fractional. We'll follow a similar procedure to calculate the formal charge on oxygen. In resonance structure A, the right oxygen has a negative one charge. And in resonance structure B, this oxygen has no charge. So we take the average between negative one and zero, which gives us negative one half. The other oxygen has the same formal charge, negative one half. In other words, the negative charge on this species is evenly split between both oxygen atoms. I'll leave you with this slide showing the Lewis structure and ball and stick models for resonance structure A. This structure does not represent the real properties of the molecule. Instead, the bottom model accurately describes the bond lengths and formal charges for this species.